welcome to this episode of Point Counterpoint. We are here to discuss uh, the surprisingly contentious Women's Reservation Bill, which was initially greeted with a lot of enthusiasm and goodwill. But when the fine print of the Women's Reservation Bill was, was looked at, uh, a realization dawned amongst many people, especially in the opposition, and I'm only reflecting comments that have come out from both from the Lok Sabha mainly and the others that when you look at the fine print of the bill it ultimately looks more like a dangling carrot than a cake with an icing on top. The reason being it has been called as a post dated check but the interesting part here is we do not know what the date on that post dated check is because the issue here is that the women's reservation bill which undoubtedly is the need of the hour and the need of many years actually is still in the making it's getting slow cooked and we will now get to know have a fair idea if at all only after the next census is undertaken post which the delimitation exercise will be done after which the, the, the different constituencies uh, will be earmarked for reservation. The point here is that was this needed now in the manner in which it was eventicized and declared as an event, this is what the opposition charges. The other issue here is that it seems to be an abridged version of the 2008 bill which was introduced by the UPA and the 2023 version is not only abridged but it basically obliterates very very critical aspects of the 2008 bill namely it is silent on reservations for OBCs and minorities within the overall reservation and that is again going to be an important issue because this has been contentious well within the NDA itself with Uma Bharti in any case speaking about OBC reservations as absolutely a must uh, before the women's reservations bill uh, can really be fructified properly. We also know that the UPCM, the, the now UPCM had then uh, spoken out openly against uh, against reservations <coughs> and even gone to the extent of stating that if all women get reservations what is going to happen to child care anyway these are the different aspects that we will we will look into and we have a very very eminent uh, uh, set of panelists who will delve into each of these issues uh, also because they've been here for a pretty long time and they understand issues we will also since we are here in Goa look into the aspects of uh, what the reservation will ultimately do in the political landscape of Goa, whether the changes are going to be dramatic, how, it is, how is it going to affect the political equation. But, but at the same time, let us all keep one thing in mind that we do not yet know where the horizon is and from where the sun will shine as far as this bill is concerned. And the whole distance to, uh, to that destination is so far that we sometimes wonder whether whether discussions like this at this point of time uh, will actually <coughs> unfold into something concrete. But nevertheless, we have to kind of as a news organization look at what's happening and that's why we are here uh, to deliberate. Uh, I'll just introduce the, the panelists, uh, Mr. Dilip Prabhudesai, the Vice President of the Goa Forward Party. Thank you, Dilip, for being here. Uh, next to him is... Uh, uh, Bina Naik ji, Bina Naik of course is the, is the state president, is the Goa Pradesh uh, president of the Mahila Congress and uh, thank you Bina ji for taking time. Uh, Prabhakar Timle of course is a veteran political analyst and commentator uh, and needs no introduction and of course uh, has an in-depth knowledge on issues like this. Dr. Manoj Kamath is a very senior academic 
and uh, we'll also deliberate on issues like this. I will uh, I will start with Dr. Kamath. Dr. Kamath, I uh, I don't have any specific uh, questions, but just like like you to reflect on some of the points uh, I've raised. Yeah, this is uh, a watershed moment uh, in the history of politics mm. of India. Mm. Uh, one because uh, this bill had really become a historic bill, mm. historic bill for obvious reasons because. Uh, for last 30, 35 years, we have been talking about such kind of a bill. I remember in 1987-88, when Rajiv Gandhi was the Prime Minister, he appointed a special committee hmm. uh, under uh, Mrs. Margaret Alva to yeah. look into issues like this. Right. And uh, this bill is such is is an outcome of the deliberations which were held long back in 87-88. Almost 40 years, 35 to 40 years uh, bygone. Yes. Currently, we are discussing this bill. Meanwhile, this bill was introduced three to four times. There was an attempt to bring it in the Lok Sabha. It got lapsed. Then mm. they tried to bring it in the Rajya Sabha and again it lapsed. Right. Subsequent governments and then suddenly of the blue moon, we see this particular bill being discussed, this bill being introduced. Mm. Though I don't doubt the intentions of this bill because this bill was a long awaited bill. And as I said, it is going to be a great moment in the, what is a historical uh, uh, context. Uh, and mm. also in the context of electoral democracy in the country. Right. Probably it is going to be a torch-bearing moment for the entire world where the women would be represented and would be given fair amount of representation mm. uh, in the people's democracy. Mm. The issue, however, is not about the intention of the bill or, or the need for such a bill, but the timing why at, at such when this particular bill is being introduced when it was not even discussed. The reason being, uh, we knew that the elections are down the corner mm -hmm. in the next five, six months. A mm. uh, couple of states are going for elections now. Mm. The census 2021, which, were, which was uh, ought to be done, the process what was supposed to be started has not yet uh, kicked off as of now. We are hearing about the delimitation process and suddenly there is a bill which we talk, which talks about empowering women at a future date, at a futuristic date and we do not know the date. Some people, as you said, rightly called it as a post-dated check. I say it's a check which is undated. And we do not know whether this check will be realized, what would be the benefits of it, and when exactly, if at all, the benefits would accrue to the women into a sense. Binanjal, quickly come to you because, uh, you know, it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is or it was supposed to be, um, you know, a watershed moment for uh, many women leaders like you. And I also remember the you know when we talk of uh, these these topics let us not forget prabila damdavati was the first person mm. way back in 1996 <coughs> she introduced a private members bill mm. and that is when the whole thing started mm -hmm. because the, you know a post which a parliamentary committee was formed mm. with geeta mukherjee of the cpi as the head of it mm. and she and a lot of others went all around the country taking you know consensus and so on and so forth so a lot of kind of water has flown down the Ganges, Yamuna, Mandavi, Gomti, wherever you, whatever you call it. So the issue here is that firstly, what do you feel as a woman politician as well and as well as somebody who understands this very closely uh, about uh, the whole nature and the substance of this legislation? Um, very good evening to everybody. And so teachers, Shubhicha, blessings. Uh, let me uh, complete the sentence that you have said. In April 1942, Mahatma Gandhi said to the British offer of independence, India independence after the World War II, and I quote, it is a post-dated check as you and Manoj already said, but I would complete that, drawn on a failing bank. Mm. Now, this is more important because right now, what is drawn on the failing, which is the failing bank? It is the BJP government, which is the failing bank. And we all know, round the corner, after a few months, we have election in the five states, and the plight of the BJP government is very dim. And perhaps that is the reason why Modi ji thought of bringing this bill hurriedly into the uh, Lok Sabha. We, Congress government, we Mailas, welcome this bill, we support this bill, but at the same time, it sounds very fishy because in a, within a day, I do, I do understand that they have numbers, but within a day, they want to pass the bill in, in Lok Sabha, which is already passed, and the number is 454 by uh, 2 have <coughs> voted against it, 
and 454 have voted in uh, support of the bill. Congress party supports the bill and that's why they got such a majority in Lok Sabha also. But the intentions of this bill, you know, sounds to be very fishy. And this is the bill for which we awaited for a long time. Let me just bring it to the notice of mm. the people. Then in 19, it was Rajiv Gandhi's dream to empower the women of India. It's not only empowering by giving the reservations. It was he who started giving, uh, making the girl child education free of child. When they were many years back, mm. perhaps immediately after 1984 or 85, I don't remember the year, <coughs> but girls were given free education. This step was not taken by any other government, by any other person. Then in 1989, Panchayat Bill was introduced in the uh, House and then in 1983, by uh, Rajiv Gandhi it was introduced and then during Rajiv Gandhi's time, but in 1993, it was passed during the tenure of P.V. Narsio Rao, who was the Prime Minister then. And this bill was passed of Panchayat Raj Bill. Okay, I'll just interrupt you for a second. You can carry on after that. See, the point is the counter argument could be that at ultimately these bills are passed when there is a majority in, in both houses. Yes. So the Congress may have had good intentions, but ultimately the, it did not have the numbers to pass it. We we know that in 2008 it was passed in the Rajya Sabha and it lapsed in the Lok Sabha. So the issue here is if there were no numbers, the intent were very good. Now Prime Minister Modi can turn around and say, look, I have the numbers, I have the brute majority and I can do it. Yes, but the intention doesn't seem to be that good. If mm. you read the uh, article, new article 334A, mm. Mm. it says first it should be de delimited, mm. uh, census should be made mm. and then it should be delimited. Mm. Why the census was not being done during his tenure in 2021 <coughs> when it was due? Why the census was not being done? And then delimitation, why they didn't start with the delimitation? Mm. Now, Rahul Gandhi yesterday who addressed the Lok Sabha, he said, you just passed the bills, you have the numbers, we didn't have the numbers. Okay, we didn't have the numbers, we had numbers in Rajya Sabha, we immediately passed. And without, and in a very democratic way. Mm. Okay, because well, that is not so with this government. Mm. BJP government, hurriedly on 18th, oh. they all of a sudden, 18th September, he calls for a meeting what first and foremost thing why the special session was called was a mystery no one knew why it was called on 18th september he calls for a meeting of his union minister none of the <coughs> union minister were aware why the meeting was called even i heard that the uh, phones were they were asked to keep their phones outside and why 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 the secret secrecy which we never did which the congress party during its tenure when the bill was passed in rajya sabha this secrecy was not there it went to the it came in the house it was stable in the house after two days it went to the standing committee parliament standing committee and then after some one month uh, one year or so the standing right. committee gave the right. report okay. and then it was passed okay Miraji, i'll come back i'll get to the next political person before coming to <laughs> the academic uh Dilip, your party has supported the bill of course yes uh, see, coming to women empowerment, hmm. which is what this bill is all about. Hmm. Every party, and I'm a, I'm from a political party, and I and I stick my neck out and say this that every party talks about political empowerment, hmm. but what actually is done on, on at at on the ground hmm. is zero so far. Hmm. Yes, I, I agree with Binaji that uh, possibly Rajiv Gandhi has been the only politician that India has seen who has actually gone ahead and 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 uh, actually I mean, formulated uh, bills and acts and whatever to right. empower women politically. Right. Today what has happened is we are seeing a government that only works or, or uh, sh shows that they are working from election to election. The only reason for this bill being passed today in uh, yesterday in parliament is because 24 year we have elections. There is no other reason. That is very obvious. Hmm. And I think even any <coughs> BJP supporter will agree to it. I have talked to many BJP people who, I mean, just yesterday I was talking to somebody in the evening who said there's no reason. I mean, why is this bill? This bill is not uh, going to lead to anything. This is even their, uh, they are voicing out the same thing. But what is more important here is that when you look at this, what is happening? We are having discussions. We are just having discussions about a bill that none of us and nobody knows when it's going to be implemented. Is it going to be implemented at all? And if it is going to be implemented, why does it need the census and the delimitation? Mm -hmm. A question that I would like to ask the, uh, the uh, 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 Modi ji, 
would be why is there a logical reason for the census and the delimitation process to be completed before implementing this hmm. i think uh, uh, I, I would like to take a break here and i would like uh, 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 bhai yeah. since he has he has experience of election commissions right. and all right. that right. to tell us why actually this is needed okay see uh, when we <coughs> come to this bill there cannot be any controversy on women's reservation hmm. women reservation had to be there hmm. and then we normally say this women reservation is for women empowerment but this kind of uh, reservation of seats in the state assemblies in the parliament is also empowering democracy that's what i want to say right now having said that uh, for such a bill which everybody says is a post dated check he says is a check without a date hmm uh, on a failing some bank some of failing yeah bank. yeah failing bank, bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Failing. why why there was so much of secrecy right and right. why it has to come at this time mm. and when is not we don't know when is going to be implemented for mm. that we should understand mm. the psychology of uh, the present government in narendra modi narendra modi is nothing his uh, usp is secrecy mm. his usp is bringing surprises whether it is demonetization or whether it is anything so he wants to spring a surprise and, and then he wants to take the whole hog the whole credit for it now <clears throat> to the specific point whether the delimitation was necessary whether the census is required as far as the women's reservation is concerned i personally feel that uh, we don't require a fresh census actually in f- uh, for women's reservation hmm. if it is reservation based for obc or for scheduled tribes the census is required because we should know in which constituencies which is the uh, what is the percentage of population of obc what is the percentage of population of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes now this everybody knows that uh, males and females are almost 50 50% I mean, there may be a marginal right. change so mm. you need not wait for delimitation but this bill says we have to wait for delimitation and then we have to wait for the census to come so which actually means that uh, the government is not serious of uh, doing women reservation at all and if you go by the performance and the working of uh, the census department and the delimitation commission once it is formed uh, you don't we, i we don't i don't think that uh, the women's reservation will become a reality uh, before 2034 right i'll just play devil's and, advocate and, and if oh. you take the goa it will not become a reality before 2032 okay i'll just play devil's advocate uh, and basically to get responses yeah, yeah. see the thing here is that the bjp may well turn around and say yeah that look none of the parties have uh, have managed to pass this bill fine we have the majority and we are declaring our intent clearly that this is our intention and we are moving ahead in that direction there are certain uh, impediments there with reg- with regard to according to them that a proper delimitation has to happen because india is completely changing constituencies are, are changing uh, if you are looking at a bill which is going to serve us for the next 30 years 50 years 60 years we need to look at a new new census because the base has to be completely different otherwise the bill will not come into effect in a in a more eff- effective manner if we do not do the do the census that is why if you are doing it after so many years if we have waited we might as well wait for another 10 years and get a proper bill done all we are saying right now here by declaring that we have the power to do it we have the numbers to do it and we will do it so the issue is why is declaration of intent such a bad thing in politics no the, Both declara- you and de- de- the declaration of intent is not there is nothing bad in it huh. but <clears throat> see there was no opposition to this intent hmm. all the political parties want women reservation correct it's not only that the bjp wants correct but any political party will say that look we have the numbers and we are doing no, it no but the point, point is conditions. the point no the huh. point the is conditions there shouldn't be any conditions right yesterday rahul gandhi announced he hmm. said that hmm. see if you do pass the bill and if we'll get it done hmm. immediately hmm. why these hurdles why these impediments in between that about census so you so, so, so you are saying you mean to say that the, they have not taken the census because they are going for election <coughs> now parliamentary election do you mean to say that they have not taken the uh, uh, delim- I means which part will be delimited and where it will be delimited it has been done but all everything is a secret because this is this government bjp government is an authoritarian type of government okay so the point is when you say that all parties want this hmm. reservation of bill hmm. is it that all parties want the intent and do not want the bill <laughs> no they all want it no they, that is what i'm saying right. that is what we have to look at Correct. do they actually just sh- want to show intent mm. do they actually want it at the ground mm. level i mean look at it this way mm. 
when what whatever opposition there has to be to this bill in the mm. past mm. Ah, so you're bringing a new aspect to it to, to you're basically testing no, no, the ground to say whether they really want it or not yeah because yes. because okay. look at it you, you, if you look at it very closely it's mm. basically the politicians mm. from up and bihar mm. who have across party lines who have been oppo opposed to this whole concept of women's reservation right how about how many seats does it add up to correct so when you add that up and look at uh, and, and, and being and the bastion, bastion of the president, so there'll be uh, most more seats going to women. Yes. Oh. No. So mm. do they really want it? Right. Uh, or are they just fooling us? I mean, demonetization told us that a lot of things will be done away with black money and all that. Right. So that didn't happen. Correct. Now, uh, now they tell us that women's reservation is going to happen, and it won't happen. Ah, it Manu, never happens. That, that is the point. Just, point just right. yes. so the whole, I think the whole approach is ah. that through delimitation, we increase the number of seats in the state assemblies and in the parliament. So that you iron out uh, the disturbance that is causing to the uh, to the existing MPs and the MLAs of uh, they not hmm. getting hmm. they I mean so that they can be accommodated. Right. Maybe yeah. you are waiting for I that. Well, I well I don't I understand. Well, well, I don't understand yeah, yeah, the well, entire yeah. logic hmm. uh, when this particular big political game has been played. Hmm. Uh, if you look at uh, when when the political parties work with. Uh, work in order to demonstrate their intent. Hmm. This was already done in the year 1987-88 by Congress. Right. It was already done by the UPA government. And this is not the first year in which uh, the government has a brutal majority. Hmm. Hmm. Government has been enjoying majority from 2013-14 onwards. Right. Exactly. So in, in all the sense, uh, this particular move makes no difference because you are talking about a bill without talking about its implementation. Probably the only historic uh, bill uh, in the country where we are not really worried about when we are going to implement it, we are not serious about it and then we are just launching a future date. The issue is when today government has the majority mm. and then the opposition is fully with the government mm. and when the opposition leader is, uh, is on board saying that I am ready to back the bill even if you want to implement it from day zero, day one from tomorrow, why is the government backing up? Hmm. So I don't think that this particular intention is can ever... I, uh, can no. I just make one point related to this? Yeah, make and then I'll ask yeah, you to respond yeah, to what the, the point that Dilip raised. Are, yeah, are I people actually so. serious? Let's not go by intentions. Huh. Intentions are the best. Hmm. But the ground situation is, hmm. I don't think any political party is prepared for women reservations. I agree. Correct. So I agree with you. Because no, I, 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 no, I don't <coughs> agree with you. I'm I mean, not talking of uh, small parties like right. Go Forward. No, no, no I no, don't agree with you. Look at it I, differently. Uh, I mean, it, this is a very clear divide between the progressive India and the regressive India. Mm. Mm. Correct. I think that in the, all the progressive states, whether it be Karnataka, Kerala, Maharashtra, you won't find any politician across party lines who's opposed to this. So you feel it is divided between India and Bharat? No, no, I won't say that. That's a very simplistic uh, divide. <laughs> this is a divide no, between I the dot so dot, I the dot so N dot D dot. <laughs> this is a divide between yes. the bastion of the BJP and the, and where the BJP does not call the shots. What is most important is what Dilip said and, and any of you all can respond to it. Is just, you know, in reality, do politicians, especially, you know, veterans who've been, uh, been been there for a long time, their sons and grandsons have become politicians, ministers, MLAs, MPs, will they ultimately seed ground? And this, no, there this, are some uh, politicians who are different, who hmm. have, who have uh, I mean, uh, brought forth their daughters and daughters-in-law. Some have done. <laughs> they, they, has done, we know. But what I'm essentially saying is, but there'll be, there'll be large chunks in, in especially, no, if you're, you'll especially have, you'll in have to, the You'll have to go with, the historical, you'll have to go with yes. the historical data. Yeah. If you look across all states and across all uh, political parties, which are national parties, hmm. uh, all these years, we have seen not more than 8% <coughs> reservation, uh, which, is which is actually happening. Hmm. Some political parties are not even fielding those number of candidates, which are the minimum candidates. Right. Even if you look at Goa to for, for the for yes, the matter, I just come to Goa. Uh, yes, whether yes. it is Congress or yes. whether it is BGP, if you look at the number of women which they have fielded, right. apart from the kith and kin right. of the existing politicians, I, mean, I don't really consider them as right. uh, as as what you say, what is a uh, a, a rightful uh, empowerment. Uh, em empowerment in true sense. Right. But then when this is the ground reality that not even 8% of the women today are representing in the Lok Sabha or at the state assemblies and when your bill is intending to give reservations not in the Rajya Sabha, so and that too it is That's not 100%. Yeah. And, and, and neither in the legislative council. Neither in the legislative yeah. councils. Yes. So it sounds very fishy, meaning, mm. meaning where is the, if you, if you tell me that your intentions are good, you need to prove that your intentions are good. Mm. And I would really say that if the BJP's intentions are good, nobody stops BJP from fielding those many number of candidates. Yes. Forget about how many win, good. we are not really interested, that is left to the exactly. people. So at least field those number of people, nobody stops you. Correct. But today the valid point is when the opposition is rallying behind the bill 
and is openly challenging the government. Come on, you implement it from tomorrow and then we are ready to back you. Why do you give it post? See, this brings me to a very interesting point and I'll throw it open to everybody. See, what had happened was that ultimately the whole debate should also center around <coughs> the fact that why do we need a law to do this? Because when the, you know, when the constitution was framed at that point of time, even during during that time, the framers of the constitution and in the constitution assembly, they felt that we would enter and we would see a progressive liberal India, proper India, yeah. which would give uh, empowerment to women anyway without without any law being thrust out. But I'll just uh, quote, in 1947, Renuka Ray made this statement in the constitution assembly. She said, when there is reservation of seats for women, the question of their consideration for general seats, however competent they may be, does not usually arise. We feel that women will get more chances in the future to come forward and work in a free India if the consideration is ability alone. In 47, this was these were words saying that ultimately we will have a country which will empower women due to their ability alone without the need for these kind of laws. Let's kind of uh, all of you all just dwell a little bit on this and give your response. Uh, well, what you say is correct. Because over the years, we have to see the progressions happening at ground level. Hmm. Only bills will not ensure this kind of progressions. Hmm. But the very fact is when OBC reservations are still yet to come to play. That's right, correct. Meaning, and uh, now, when now, they were there in the early when, when they were there in, in the, the early Avatar. Avatar. Yeah. Yes. So yes. that was very uh, intellectually yes. hmm. dropped in this in this current hmm. bill. So if somebody tells me that the intentions are good and the party is trying to play or the government is, is playing its with its intentions and then demonstrating to people yes we are with people we are with women hmm. actually you are not hmm. actually you are not and the basics of the bills itself talks about no, it. See, you, you are asking the question yeah uh, i'll just ask the question once more yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. see the your point is you also been uh, you know uh, politically inclined yeah. and also uh, you know seen politics very very closely yeah do you really feel that political parties are really interested in women empowerment or do they do, do lip service? Correct. I mean, yeah. point is they will correct. have one correct. chapter in the manifesto, correct. they will uh, uh, cut and paste schemes and, and, and put it there. Are they really interested and how much of empowerment do they do to their own uh, Mahila units, the Mahila Sangathans, yeah, yeah. their frontal organizations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? See, your question was, hmm. and, and is again, hmm. that uh, such things should happen without reservations. Hmm. But without reservations, you cannot give a level playing field to women. Hmm. So you cannot say, uh, you know, why you should have uh, reservations in employment for OBC, for SC and ST. The same argument is here because uh, women is a handicapped uh, group right now. So it has to be given protection and the protection comes to reservation. So without reservations, no, you can have, yeah, of course, women can also contest in the general seats. There's no issue. They are doing. Even but doing but what, once there is <coughs> reservation, then there will be participation of women in democratic bodies what you knew no what you now see in local self governing bodies urban mm. bodies and all mm. because of reservation yes. mm. otherwise it will not automatically happen mm. Mm. now you answer to your question whether the political parties are uh, you know inclined and uh, or do they do lip key. service oh. no uh, oh. see up to now if you look at you can say they have been doing lip service mm. because if you look at political parties at the organizational level in all political parties you don't find representation to women as required mm or whatever intentions they convey about women right that they should be brought into politics and today politics is competitive politics is just not a service politics is a career today hmm. and if it is a career then people have to be groomed for that career to take up responsibilities and the responsibilities and training starts with giving them organizational responsibility so which is not happening in any political party right, right. now at least because this bill is coming at least now it is a wake up call for political parties to pack their uh, you know, uh, women in their organizations so that they get the political or women in the political leadership. Correct. Uh, Biraji, one straight question. Over the years, how many tickets have the Congress given to Mahilas in the in the uh, assemblies or or also also in the local? Let, let us kind of the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Yeah. My issue is that here, you, my point is what has been the Congress's track record in giving tickets to women. Uh, I'll further state this and this is not Congress's fault. But from 1984 mm. to 19, 1990 or even beyond, Goa did not have a single woman uh, MLA. In 1984, from 1980, sorry, from 1980 no, to had. 1989, in 1984 there were three we nominated women MLAs. They were not elected. Yeah. 
Yeah. But uh, so, okay, so I'm essentially saying. And there was mommy was in electorate afterwards. Afterwards, it is. I'm saying from eight, 1980 to 89, 90, mm. there was not a single woman MLA for 10 years in in the Goa Assembly. Mm. In 1984, there were three nominated, uh, in, you know, uh, people who, who were there, women were there. My issue here is that even as far as the Congress is concerned, the charge is mm. that the Congress is also guilty of the same lip service that other parties are. No. Otherwise, you prove prove this this uh, statement wrong. No, I I, I uh, yeah I prove the statement because I don't agree with what you say. Mm. As far as Goa is concerned, I'll speak about it later on. Mm. But as far as Congress Party overall in India is concerned, it is only Congress Party which has given the first. Mm. I was, I was talking only about Goa. Right Goa. now, I'm mo I'm moving to Goa because <laughs> some part of the debate has to come. To come <laughs> has to see, 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 We I'm are not, all uh, here. See, I'm, not, I'm not going to. Uh, yeah. to go to the rescue of uh, bina right but what yeah. i want to say is you can't blame the congress on any point because all political the political parties were doing the same thing no, no, so, the so finally yes. elections yeah. is exactly. about competitive politics yeah, so and all i'm saying so yeah so, so let us agree that congress is no different yeah let us agree that congress is no different then no we yeah yeah no, that's no, actually no, actually no. what you're asking huh. is actually sort of justifies the right right that's what i'm saying that's what history has told us right In spite of whatever Fair Redu Kare said Fair in nineteen forty seven, yes, that has not come true. Right. So now to get women reservation in in mm. politics, mm. this bill is a, a must. must. Correct. A And must. the the must bill is not wanted by the present government. Right. It's, you, it's, but yeah. you, but it was <laughs> it was see perhaps mm. the Congress party is the only party which has a foresight. Mm. And that's why Rajiv Gandhi he started for girls. free education but so try to understand he was the one who tried to empower the women but has I mean, that foresight Panchayat been reflected in goa has goa goa uh, drawn goa, from that foresight yeah. has goa learned that lesson from that rajiv gandhi i think, yeah. I, I, i don't think <laughs> no, i mean to be very frank to, to be very frank rajiv gandhi, gandhi I, has been an exception Ah. Even the rest of the Congress party has not learned from him. Mm. Let let alone go. go Correct. I mean, very. But, let's be very frank. Right. But given all this, the present leadership of the Congress looks to be different. Mm. That is something that we have mm -hmm. to admit. The present mm. leadership of the Congress seems to be in some way reflect the whatever uh, that period of the Congress when Rajiv Gandhi ruled. Of course, there was a lot of negatives there also. Right. But forget that. This seems to be when when some leaders speak in the Lok Sabha, they seem to speak the right things. Whether they'll see, do the right things or not is a different yeah, matter. Yeah, see, see, see. I would like to ask whether BJP has given. Okay, no, no, BJP is not given, but Congress, 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 Congress,
bell for everybody. Correct. Come on, you go and train and uh, cultivate yeah. your women leaders now. Let us now come to come to Goa. Moving beyond the bill, isn't it surprising? Say Goa is known as a as a more progressive state. The level of education is high. There are there are you know uh, and you know, the whole so-called misogynist discrimination, which is witnessed in North India and other places, Goa is bereft of that. So, uh, uh, Manoj, don't you feel that you know given this kind of an ecosystem, it is really surprising that Goa has not had more lady stalwarts in the political sphere. Because no political system uh. is totally different, even ir irrespective of uh, the socio-economic indicators. Hmm. Let us uh, let hmm. us agree to this. Hmm. Goa has always been progressive, hmm. but this progression has not been reflected in women. Uh, what do you say? Participating on their own in political affairs. Forget about that. Every time the uh, woman commission chief appointment of woman commission chief is the last thing on the agenda of any government. We just Hmm. go to the historical records including hmm. the present one hmm. so if this is a state of affairs where do you think will this particular progression lead to hmm. historically if you even if you look at uh, the goa's uh, women hmm. uh, into a political sphere hmm. sashikala kakodkar to some extent hmm. of course she had her own acumen Right. But the basic uh, fact that she happened to be the daughter of a veteran Correct. was the prime qualification mm. for her. Of right. course, she was into the social field. Right. But then all the other uh, women legislators who have been there, except for one or two, like that of Victoria or so, who were in the social field, mm. others had some kind of a political background. Mm. So it was a political uh, uh, empires which their families have created. Or either, uh, and to a very, very uh, less percentage, hmm. it was the self acumen of the people which made them get into politics. Hmm. So, if this is a state of a progressive state, then you certainly cannot compare Bihar and Rajasthan hmm. and Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. And this. So, we are no longer different hmm. from the rest of the country. Yeah, if we look at you, mentioned uh, Victoria Fernandez a little bit. The only the other uh, woman MLA who is not necessarily from a big political family is Feral Furta, who came in. Became, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that could be the second one. Yeah. But but if you look at Alina Saldana, uh, she came into politics because after uh, after her husband. If you look at all the three lady MLAs <coughs> now, all, present, all, present all, all, yeah. all each of them. We had Nirmala Savant also. Nirmala Savant. Yes, Nirmala we should we shouldn't forget. Yeah. Nirmala Savant. 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 Exactly. After that, of course, Congress has been in power for most of the period right. in, in the country. Right, right. But then, unless you have a leader who is progressive, you will not see exactly. the changes at the grassroots mm, levels. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, just uh, just uh, yeah, yeah, carry yeah. on with this thought. Yeah. This whole issue of uh, this whole thing of why do, don't we get more women from social movements, from political movements, from student movements to to come? Because you all all have been seen the student movement very very closely. Even from those movements. You know, you, you you don't have the. I mean, you may have a few quality women who've come out, but in terms of sheer numbers, it's way sh way uh, short of expectations. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you agree? No. Yeah. Why don't it come? Is uh, it is. You see, our society, <laughs> our society psyche is we are finally male dominated. Right. So I will ask you the question: Why do you don't have? Uh, you know, uh, why, why, why you don't see women editors? Yeah, exactly. Correct. Why women have to be only editors and copywriters? Correct. So, because it is a male dominated society and the management, which is male dominated, and others don't see that they will be able to take up responsibilities. Correct. No? Correct. So, so, it's the same thing is in politics, and today politics is very competitive. That's right. So, it is not just service today, it is a career. Mm. And uh, winning an election is uh, not like uh, passing a uh, an exam where you study two books and mm. appear for a question paper and right. write it in three hours. Mm. It's very competitive. Mm. It requires a lot of equipment. It requires Investment. money. It mm. requires money muscle. muscle. Mm. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm not saying in a negative sense. Right. Right. I mean, right. Right. and it requires a f uh, commitment of 24 hours. Right. So finally, we have to create that leadership. Right. Right, absolutely. And, and the society looks at men differently and women differently mm. even today. Yes, right. that's right. true.
and that is the reason we are again saying that this kind of reservation will force us hmm. to create that leadership right. i will just add one more thing sure. to hmm. it yeah i mean he said commitment hmm. i fully agree with what hmm. uh, mr timble said right that not only commitment but that type of environment should be generated in the society right, right and right. if that type of giving importance to the women money power is another thing but the, if that importance is if that type of environment is created in the society naturally that will boost that will boost the morale of the ladies to come ahead do you feel that now which is not which is not okay, so now since the bill is introduced and we do not know when it will see the light of day but you yeah. as the president of the mahila congress will you now demand from your own party that irrespective of whether the bill is is passed or not there should be 33% reservation among ticket distribution irrespective of whether the bill is actually passed we have been demanding it for years hmm. together hmm. but we how do you answer the question when it comes Kattu to what is the winability i mean as a, right. as a political Again, party that comes to that thing yeah. winability right if we have the winability then only you no uh, but uh, is the congress willing to say that we will sacrifice winability for capability in environment at least no party empowerment party. Is no, 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 no no is this why should any party or the whole panel to her and others also no why should any political party why should any political party contest elections to lose this i'm asking no party will okay, lose so no, you no, no, contest no, no, elections okay, to win fine, not to lose okay so i have i have a question to this answer the question to this answer is if that is the case then ultimately the, we, we know when the question of reservations comes yeah. this question will be asked even at that point of time no no no, 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 no once you are reserved, reserved then, once you are reserved then, then, once you are reserved the reservation is with women only on concentration is with women now what is happening in panchayat what is happening at municipality level if there is a reservation now are we not getting the many phases so, in municipality so, so what what you are actually uh, saying is that that your party will not have enough women candidates to contest against no i never said that of course we have a lot of many candidates and they will come ahead Mm. and they will come ahead once the reservation is being done and that's why we are asking demanding this reservation okay. yes together so the thing is mm. the woman candidate might actually be winnable correct but because of the male dominant mm. uh, yeah. upper echelon of the mm. party mm. they don't look at the candidate as winnable right. they don't they, it is just a perception no, but I'm that just the moment saying, it's a woman it's but it's i'm just saying but, but, no, but if a, if a I, major I'm, national I'm party like the that, he said Correct. that way i'm really happy mm. because he has agreed that there's a male domination no, if Binaji, i would have said i think <laughs> all of them no, would have no no but, but but binaji let's look at it this way if if a strong national party like the congress in different state state states state units mm. come up and say look irrespective of whatever happens we will demand with our our organization or our parties that at least begin by saying we okay, don't give 33 i will intervene here See, we, huh. i will intervene on two <laughs> points one <laughs> which she might not like huh. is how strong is the congress to do hmm. this sort of a thing maybe they could have done this 15 years ago so today we should be asking the bjp to do this no let the bjp do this why no. should the congress uh, do this? we should ask the everybody congress is the strong part i would BJP have asked the, the bjp party. if there was somebody from the bjp in the let me tell you i'm asking let me tell you what is the person why, why, why so hurriedly bjp is trying to bring this bill because they know that they're failing in various states five right. states with, uh, right. to which they are going for election hmm. and perhaps parliament also they are not going to win but i and still feel the they are trying to vote the women right. they are trying to take the advantage of women because the population of women as i know and since i've heard it i i will actually more not yes. it's more it's yes. more the 51 uh, 51 percent actually they are aware of it yes so everyone knows census is done by each yes. and every party it's not done the census is not being done see yes. prabhakar the issue here here is that Nari now <laughs> our political parties now the issue is irrespective of when, when the bill is passed yeah no but, but don't you think it will be a good political strategy for a political party to, to say that irrespective of whether the bill is passed or not we will make an effort to give higher representation of women and we are see uh, it 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 may be good for me to mm. say this in a classroom atmosphere or in a seminar right but on the battle ground in politics mm. it would be suicide mm. okay. if if you say we will give 33% to women without reservations means mm. if one party says will give then it is their doomsday mm. because the voters uh, you know the voters behavior is different you don't understand that so the the long and the short of this is till that till we see a date on the post date check nothing is going to change absolutely nothing is going correct, to change correct. but this no. is but this gives us enough time and space hmm. to groom our leadership hmm. because one day whether it is 10 years or 19 years you know now that it is coming going to come to reality hmm. now whichever party comes to power you cannot backtrack this particular legislation because hmm. now the number of women are increasing in the electoral electorate right so one day today or tomorrow you need yes. to face this mm. at that time probably there must be no dearth of enough candidates who are winnable candidates right 
So this 10 years time probably is a preparation time for women, preparation time for political parties to change their psyche, to understand that they are uh, an important representation and they represent true issues and then we need to be serious about grooming them or taking leadership roles within the party and being prepared for fighting in the open sphere in the most competitive arena. The last point which you, uh, one of you all briefly mentioned and very interesting point that look this government is in the last phase of its second term. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a, it's a full decade that has, that has gone by. Uh, and the government had the time to do it from the beginning of the, of their first term from 2014 onwards. And the issue is that this, everybody is questioning this entire, entire, entire delay because, uh, the other day, uh, I, I think <coughs> one of them mentioned in the in the Lok Sabha that just before the 20, 2014 elections, that time Narendra Modi was not not yet the prime minister, but he addressed a gathering of uh, women entrepreneurs in Fiki, and where he spoke, where he proudly spoke about the 50 percent reservations that he had given in Gujarat in the in the local local bodies and units, and he said this is going to come into come, come into effect quickly. So the whole issue is that okay. A for 10 years, this has not been pushed. But during those 10 years, don't you feel even the opposition should have kind of pushed it and questioned the uh, government a lot? We have been. Mm. Congress party mm. from time to time has been demanding. Mm. They have uh, in 2010, mm. uh, sorry, in 2014 also, mm -hmm. uh, later on 14, uh, Sonia Gandhi herself with the signatures of all the ladies from all over India had taken the representation and given it to the pres then president. Right. Not only that, she has also uh, from time to time letters have been written by Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi to the present prime minister asking for the yeah, reservation. This, I but agree. Why he 2018 and yes, 2019 yes. both times. But why yes. is it yeah. that prime minister was pushing it? Mm. So the niyat of this present government Mm. is some is very fishy mm. and i would also like to speak about if they are so concerned about the women the title that they have given nari shakti vandan abhi uh, adhiniyam 128 amendment bill whatever it is mm. nari shakti vandan atas now only they thought of uh, saluting the women what about those young wrestlers who were sitting there in ja at jantar mantar and uh, prime minister was inaugurating the uh, sorry uh, doing the puja there just 10 minutes away of the present uh, parliament why he could not stop them if it was really so the second thing what about the manipur if he really was concerned and wanted to salute these women and uh, gain their sympathy, hmm. why is it that manipur right. issue was not taken by him why is it till four months have passed he has not visited the place so this is what so the yeah, some you know, uh, it's not only fish, it's jumla hai. Because even in 2019, uh, BJP government has passed hurriedly Citizenship Act. Right. Okay. Right. right. But till date, it has been passed, hmm. Im not implemented. So now also, here they brought the, the uh, hurdles saying that yes, we are giving all the women reservation. They want to take the pride just to win these elections. So that's why I'm saying that this government is not at all serious about respecting women, about giving position to women. Why is it that they have not given, uh, no, not a single woman is being made a president of BJP till date when we had so many presidents uh, of our party, in the Congress party. Mm. Why is it that RSS people have not given any lady a uh, uh, you know, higher post? Why is it? They mm. don't have. Mm. Whereas Congress party has always given a president, first speaker, of the Lok Sabha and Congress party is always seeing to it that uh, women should come ahead and be empowered. But there is a Mahila president from the backward sections. Which? Backward? Yes. Okay. Ah, that, that one more. Good. That you brought it to my notice. <laughs> Mahila president. Yesterday, uh, two, uh, two days back on 19 when this bill came into the house, she being the president belonging to the um, uh, minority, she should have been there. Right. She should have been sitting there. Why she was not there? Okay. Uh, one one question that I I would like to ask is so this itself see, shows STs, that they discriminate. Okay. They discriminate. If, if any particular community or caste is denied reservation, mm -hmm. we have seen the Maratha uh, mm -hmm. this uh, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? the movement in Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. 
different at different times you have seen obcs and all why don't the women come out on the streets and demand for their reservation yeah i mean i don't understand we came. You, women no the women it's not the not women of party. congress or something it is not congress oh, 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 or bjp why do not the women of india so what you come saying? out and demand because what what i want to say is after very logically after the reservation for women in in panchayats and uh, mm. yeah mm. we have seen many sarpanch uh, sarpanch patis correct mm -hmm. correct even goa has sarpanch patis it's a shame actually yeah, good you what mentioned this because it's one sarpanch patis right, right, if you are right, right. we call us a progressive right. they have been there mm. and unfortunately this sarpanch patis exists till 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 this time of the panchayat mm. mm. so if that has not happened do, will we have mla patis in the future that is another question that's a very that important point that you raised yes correct i i agree that's a very good so, point to so where made. are the women of the country yes, yes. where are the women of the country as one consolidated force asking what are you saying the voices? same constituency that took to the streets uh, uh, in protest against the nirbhaya exactly, brutality exactly. the same constituency should come out on the streets for, for asking political for reservation yes, political reservation okay. why don't they do this uh yeah but one interesting point which meena ji yeah, actually yeah, raised she yeah. mentioned two very two or three very important points yeah. she she raised the issue of of manipur yeah and she also raised the issue of uh, the fact that the the mp who has been charged with molesting yes. and uh, sexually assaulting women wrestlers still happens to be uh, merrily house. sitting in the house, house while the wrestlers have have Results suffered of. the issue here is this is a this is a pointer to the fact that the opposition is charging the government for bringing in a women's reservations bill on one side but at the same time uh, either condoning or maybe tacitly Uh, maintaining a silence against brutal atrocities and torture on women is that is that charge correct see uh, nobody can deny that this charge uh, is not correct because the, these charges are there against the government hmm. and um, somehow the government is dilly dallying hmm. and um, not coming out clear not coming out emphatically hmm. uh, and neither initiating any kind of uh, political and legal action against this right right whether it is manipur or whether it is the question of uh, the restless the restless correct yeah, yeah. correct so yeah the other but, but let us not confuse this with the, the our topic for no, discussion no, 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 no we are not confused no we are not confusing yeah. it but yeah. if we don't raise it also see at the end of the day it's a, it's a valid point because the issue is that you know uh, ultimately you know this is one line that has been constantly echoed in the lok sabha in the last two or three days niyat mein khot hai ha niyat mein khot this is something that you know we've heard again and again and again and again so the issue and, and uh, one more point since since we talked of pati and patni correct let us also not uh, uh, you know make fun of women's reservations I, i'm not saying you're making fun hmm. and trivialize trivialize no the but, but he's no, no, saying I'm, that i'm doing exactly hard reality i'm doing exactly the yeah, 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 hard reality yeah, of uh, yeah, such yeah. situation no, no, because initially hmm. initially such aberrations may happen correct but uh, after two rounds the aberrations will not happen but you have backed up as you but get but are these really aberrations if you look at look, look at all the panchayats yeah. in goa there are so many going on. it's been a long time it's still going on that's that is the issue. that's the do, issue. do you agree do you agree that uh, sarpanch patis are there in goa yes they are one cannot deny sarpanch patis existence right and they have been there and they will be there unless the woman come forward and say and then start being assertive yes it is my freedom and i am going to handle it hmm. so this will only come by by virtue of time no, i'm sure by, by the it may happen in one more round in the next round it will change exactly yes, it, will it will change, will change. these are will... initial aberrations will, exactly. uh, they they are bound to happen so the earlier and, and so then, basically the earlier we have women's reservation bill this, this correct correct the earlier 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 earlier. So by, the by now not, they would have been more quite ahead I mean, exactly Why? We already waited 30 years. Let us wait 10 so more years. Is not possible. No, let no. let it be implemented. No, I think it looks it looks that the government, the BJP government, has brought no it only to use it as a kind of advertisement blitz for 2024 election. Election. That's all they say. Okay. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when uh, our country came into being in the manner that it came into being, uh, it happened with a lot of lot of hope, lot of uh, aspirations, and I think. within the whole ecosystem of we being a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic i will still use the word liberal and uh, <laughs> socialist and secular uh, irrespective of whether the 42nd <laughs> amendment is implemented or not but uh, when this was done i'm sure you know within this whole uh, whole atmosphere was the inherent belief that the genders would be treated equ uh, equally there yeah. would be equality amongst men and women uh both both genders would would progress equally 
uh, in a spirit of uh, empowerment and opportunity is given to both. And this hope was envisaged not by this current generation, but also the generation of women who are part of the Constituent Assembly, who actually stepped back and said, no, we do not need specific detailing or specific laws to empower women, because they had a huge confidence in the India that was that they were seeing in the future. Somewhere along the line, this confidence and this hope has been has been belied. And that I think is a bigger tragedy than whether whether this bill comes into comes into or not. Because, you know, when that generation of our, you know, they, they would be our great grandmothers or even, even even beyond, when they had so much of hope and confidence in the India that would be, the failing of that hope or letting them down, I think, is a is a is a much bigger tragedy uh, which inflicts a lot of pain than anything that any bill can do. And the sad reality today, as most of the panelists have said, that it seems that there is no way out but to have that bill because we have failed to live up to the spirit of our great great grandmothers. And I think it is on this note that we end that we end this whole discussion, the note of sadness, but also a little bit of hope in trying to ensure that this bill is kind of passed sooner than later, though we don't see that hope in the horizon, but constant efforts must be made to see that this is passed without any further delay. I thank all panelists for uh, this riveting discussion and we hope we keep this conversation going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.